Hello everyone, this is Rick and welcome to Astral Club. This is Adventures Beyond the Body. Before we get into it, just want to mention Patreon. If you'd like to support the important work of Astral Club, you can do so on Patreon. You get downloaded episodes, I think there's about 80 right now, where you can load onto your podcast app and listen to offline. Uh, of course, there is uh, no commercials. Uh, email, where we can talk back and forth on Patreon. You can ask questions, uh, share your experiences, and of course, you get your advanced videos on Sunday. Next up, private lessons. If you'd like to learn Astral Project, uh, I'll be more than willing to uh, help you. You'll find in the description an email where you can contact me for more information. And of course, there's a link to Patreon if you wish to, uh, to join Astral Club as a patron. Adventures Beyond the Body. This is one of the books that is written by William Bowman, and he published this one in 1996. And I want to share some of this book because it's uh, it's just one of my favorite astral projection books. I don't think I've talked about it enough. Yes, I've talked a lot about Robert Monroe, for instance, and some other folks. But I think William Bullman is also uh, very worth discussing. By reading his books, I can tell he's the genuine article. Anyone who's astral projected extensively can tell by the little things they see in the writing that indicates, okay, this guy really did it. He's not just someone who read some books somewhere and, um, and made some sort of uh, uh, assumptions based on that. And what I want to share here is some of his earlier experiences uh, in 1972, where he was really getting started with astral projection because his experiences are so easily identifiable by anybody who's ever projected that I think you'll find that it's a common denominator uh, everybody who asks me questions when they're when they've newly projected or they're about to project invariably ask me, "Is what I'm experiencing normal?" Well, uh, I'd like to share some of um, William Bowman's uh, book concerning some of the experiences that he had when he was getting started in '72, and I think you'll realize that there's very common themes here that you've asked about in the past, I've talked about in the past, but it's always interesting to get another person's perspective, not only because maybe you missed something in your own experiences or your own reading or your knowledge, um, or you just want to see if, uh, if what you have experienced is is normal <laughs> if you can use that particular term for for anything to do with astral projection at any rate he started out much like i did keeping things secret because uh, he was aware uh, especially back in that time frame just like i was aware uh, he was older than i was in 72 but i was still old enough to know that i needed to keep my mouth shut about astral projection if I didn't want to end up on a psychiatrist's couch uh, or put on some psychiatric medication uh, or and or be made a pariah amongst my friends and, uh, and schoolmates. Uh, and so he started out much the same way I did because he didn't want to be put into those um, very unfavorable categories. So by July 1972, he realized he had come up with a technique that worked for him. So he decided to focus on this technique. And quite frankly, his technique was visualization. And boy, did he invest time in visualization. And I can tell you through my own experiences and through my own uh, exercises that I did, while slightly different than the way he did it, it's still in the same species. So it's, it's quite interesting to know that I arrived at the same um, ideas 
when I was just a kid back then that he arrived at separately. So he decided to focus on this visualization technique, uh, especially as he drifted off to sleep. And I have emphasized this before, and it's highly important uh, because your mind is incredibly suggestible as you are nodding off to sleep. So if you're looking to implant a suggestion that can kick in at some point after your conscious mind has sunk, uh, uh, as, it, as, it, as what we call it, falling asleep, then, then that's the time uh, right before right before bed to right before falling asleep, it's the best time to do this type of visualization technique. And the good news is it doesn't require hours. Uh, it requires minutes. It just requires keeping it up so that you it can become habit forming. Yes, in our society, habit forming things tend to be negative. But in this case, forming a habit of visualization before you fall asleep, to induce astral projection is very much a positive thing. Well, at first it seemed difficult for him as it is for many people, but after a few weeks, he could picture his room's details with increasing clarity while his eyes, his physical eyes were closed, of course, because we're doing visualization now. He could picture the furniture, the patterns in the fabrics, the textures, even small imperfections in the wood and paint began to be clear in his mind. And he realized that the more he pictured himself interacting with these physical objects, the more detailed his visualizations would become. And with practice, he learned how to visualize himself walking about his room, memorizing specific items that it contained. He also learned the importance of and he has this in quotes, feeling the environment with his mind. That feeling he's looking for is an ident. Monroe would call it an ident. The f he wanted to know the feel of the carpet on his feet, the sensation of sitting in a chair, walking, turning on a lamp, or even opening a door. Now, the more detailed and involved his visualization was, the more effective he found his astral projection attempts. Now, at this point, he decided to keep a journal of his out-of-the-body experiences, which is the same thing that I did. Uh, because when you're keeping a journal, you're not only preserving the experience in the best form possible, rather than trying to rely upon your, your physical memory for long periods of time, but he was able to reinforce these experiences by writing them down. Your conscious mind and even your subconscious, eventually, if something's important enough to write down, it takes on a greater importance in the conscious mind and eventually it seeps into the subconscious mind, which of course is, is the mind that we need to get keyed in to the whole concept of astral projection because the conscious mind by itself can't project. It needs the assistance of the subconscious mind to kickstart the experience. So he starts with his first journal entry of, in August 6th of 1972. And this is a typical type of early experience. He said he awakened at 4 a.m. after three and a half hours of sleep. Why is it that astral projectors many times tend to be night owls? I don't know what it is, but I've noticed that many uh, astral projectors who are quite good at it tend to be night owls. And if you leave me to my own uh, devices, I'm more likely to be sleeping in the daytime than I am at night. Uh, I suppose I'd be an ideal vampire, uh, but I really don't like the taste of blood, so I suppose that's a bad idea. However, uh, he said that he woke at 4 a.m. after about three and a half hours of sleep, which I think is very interesting. I quite often wake up after three or three and a half hours of sleep, too. It's because I have programmed myself that if I'm tired, I want to get the initial rest period out of the way. Yes, 
If I'm not that tired, you might see me projecting around 45 minutes after I, quote, fall asleep. But if I'm feeling tired, I want to get that tiredness out of the way because it inhibits the ability of the conscious mind to take over from the subconscious. So much like I would do, he would wake up after about three or three and a half hours of sleep. And uh, what did he do? Well, he started to read a book about out-of-the-body experiences. Isn't that interesting? He'd read for about 15 minutes until he became sleepy. And then he would decide to visualize his mother's living room. He selected this because he knew it extremely well. Uh, within the living room, there was, there was items like a metal ashtray, uh, a wooden doorstop, a watercolor of the ocean. And as he pictured this room vividly in his mind, he, um, he began to understand more and more of, of what it felt like to move about in that particular uh, area or focus. He'd even uh, zoom in on certain items. Uh, he'd move his focus from one, one item to another, touching one thing or another. Keep in mind, this is all still visualization. And uh, he would become mentally immersed in the sensations and the sights of this living room at his mother's house as he drifted off to sleep. Now, that may have sounded like it was extensive, but all of that could happen within a period of a couple of minutes. Heck, it could happen quicker than it took me to describe it to you. Um, and the first time he did this, he was shaken uh, awake by a uh, uh, intense vibrations and a roaring sound throughout his body. He said it felt like he was in the middle of a jet engine and that his body and mind were about to vibrate apart. Anyone who's experienced the vibratory phase can understand that feeling. Now, at first, just like most people, he was shocked and scared by the intensity of the vibrations and the sounds, and he snapped back to his body. Then he would open his eyes, and he realized that he was completely numb, but there was a strange tingling sensation spreading throughout his body. I would experience a lot of tingling happening in my third eye, which is in my forehead region, and around the crown of my head, and there would also be residual sensations all throughout my body as well. After a few minutes, his normal uh, physical sensations would slowly return, and I can certainly sign off on that. That would happen to me as well, and I suspect many people out there currently listening to this are probably saying to themselves, yeah, that happened to me too. Now, he couldn't believe the intensity of these vibrations, and he'd, he'd lie in bed and, and wonder uh, what the deal was with these vibrations and these sounds and what caused them. Uh, he knew they weren't physical sensations, and he could only guess that somehow they were connected to his non-physical form or astral form. Uh, and it was probably his, um, his physical body's interpretation of this energy that was being generated by uh, the beginning of an astral exteriorization. Um, now, maybe uh, he would say that this, uh, this transition was just part of the out-of-the-body experience. Whatever it was, he knew that it scared the heck out of him. Uh, but he was still determined, okay? He did not allow fear to eat him alive. He decided that he had to go on, that there had to be logical explanations for this. Uh, now, for the next week, nothing happened. And I can tell you how many times I've had people say that, that, oh, geez, you know, I, I had this experience and now it's been a week or two and nothing's happened. And uh, was it all a dream? Did I imagine it? Have I lost the ability? Uh, there, there's always doubts like that. So what's, if there's one thing I can say about astral projection is that <laughs> you never know. Uh, I can go to sleep and decide to astral project and a good portion of the time it'll work, but sometimes it just doesn't. And there's probably many reasons why it doesn't, but don't let it get you down, okay? You're not going to 
It's not, it's not like setting your alarm clock and you can, you can depend upon your iPhone or, or what have you going off at the time you set it. There's more to it than that. I've mentioned in the past the phases of the moon. Uh, a full moon, I can always sense when there's a full moon. You don't have to tell me. I can feel it in my body. And there's something about it that it pulls at me. And so projecting during that period of time is always a lot easier than during some other periods of time. So, so like I said, for him, nothing happened the next week. And he started to doubt himself. And he doubted the experience. Then he said one evening, about 11 o'clock, he dozed off while visualizing his mother's living room. Within minutes, he was startled awake by a piercing buzzing sound and vibrations throughout his body. I would quite often hear the same thing, a buzzing sound, the vibrations. Sometimes I would hear music, like radio music. He would open his eyes and he'd realize that he was half in and half out of his body. Now, his first reaction, again, was fear. And panic flooded into his mind and instantly snapped him back into his body. That happens so much, which is why I constantly say you have to deal with your fear because fear is your enemy. Fear is lack of knowledge, lack of trust. And if you want to astral project, you need both of those things. So he'd open his physical eyes and he'd discover that his physical body was numb and tingling again. And as before, the sensation slowly dissipated and um, the bed um, would shake uh, and uh, during some of these times. And I can tell you, I've had some of those experiences too, where I, w I would think for a second, is this, is this an earthquake? Uh, but then I'd realize that, no, this is just another experience as your way out of your body. Now, you don't always have all these experiences, but I've had all of these experiences at one time or another. So he'd review the experience and try to correct what he did wrong. He'd try to suppress his fear as much as possible. And he found himself eventually calming down focusing his thoughts away from his physical body, and he began to encourage the vibrations to return. And this also reminds me of a truth that if you project and you return to your body, you can always go out again many times. Uh, just many people don't realize that. So he said that he really, he, uh, after about 15 minutes, he relaxed again, okay? And he again would drift off to sleep and the vibrations would return again. And they'd start at the back of his neck and slowly spread to his whole body. Typically, I've always just felt the whole body going, but I mean, that's a minor point if you think about it. And he believed it was because he was experiencing higher frequencies, higher energy levels, and I would agree. But this time he remained calm. His anxiety level decreased and he recognized that the vibrational sensations were actually enjoyable when he was prepared. And I would agree with that as well. He heard a high-pitched buzzing and it seemed to resonate in his body. And he felt energized and light as a feather. With the thought of floating upwards, that's what he would experience. Uh, he felt completely weightless. And for the first time, the sensations were absolutely wonderful. He floated up to the ceiling and touched it with his hand. And I can tell you, I've had similar experiences. It's been a long time since I did that. But back in the early 70s, I certainly was. Anyway, he was amazed and he realized that he was touching the energy substance of the ceiling. Um, he pressed his hand into the hazy molecular structure and he felt a tingling vibrational energy in the ceiling. As he withdrew his hand from the ceiling, he noticed that his arm sparkled like a thousand points of brilliant blue and white light. That's a very poetic uh, description. I can't say that I've ever had that exactly. But then again, it's been a, such a long time since I really paid attention to early experiences. I just want to get out as quickly as possible nowadays. 
you know, when you're in, when you're a newbie, you're really excited about being out and you're usually hanging out in your room, just fascinated by everything. But, you know, it's been so long since I've done that. I don't really recall something like that. Anyway, out of curiosity, he reached out his other hand and he grasped his outstretched arm. And to his surprise, it felt solid to the touch. When you're in the lower astral, which he obviously was at this stage of the game, it's quite typical to be in the lower astral when you first leave your body. It can feel very real. It can feel like a real body to you, which is why I suspect some folks who pass on without any spiritual knowledge or experience can become quite confused as to why they are now experiencing this new state of being um, because they don't know they've passed on because it feels like they're still in their body. Anyway, he allowed himself to be mesmer mesmerized by the, the depth and the beauty of these lights. And then he realized that his arm appeared to be a universe of stars. Oh, that's pretty cool. It's strange to describe, he says, but he felt drawn into a universe that was him. At that instant, he snapped back into his body and the numbness and the tingling sensations subsided and he opened his eyes in awe. Now, his next journal entry was in October 4th of 1972. He silently repeated his affirmation, saying, now I'm out of my body for 10 to 15 minutes as he grew increasingly sleepy. As much as possible, he would intensify these affirmations as he drifted off to sleep. And in this case, almost instantly, he was awakened by intense vibrations and an electrical-like buzzing throughout his body. He was startled and that intense wave of fear surged through him again. But he calmed himself by repeating, I'm protected by the light. Hey, whatever works for you, use it. Uh, I've told you in the past about my litany against uh, fear, which I borrowed from the Dune series. I liked it so much that I pretty much memorized it virtually word for word. If you recall, um, uh, the litany is, I will not fear, the fear is the mind killer. Fear is the little death that brings total obliteration. I will uh, face my fear and um, see its source and allow it to go through me. And when it is gone, I turn my inner eye to see where the fear has gone. Where the fear was, there is nothing, only I remain. And that's something I've used throughout my life in the physical or the astral. Uh, and so whatever works for you uh, to quiet that fear. Uh, so his initial fear, it dissipated and he began to visualize himself surrounded by a globe of protective light. Uh, which is a lot like the Astral Shield episode I talked about a few weeks ago. He would then think of floating and feeling himself lift up and out of his physical body. He felt light as a feather and he floated away upwards. Uh, as he floated away from his body, he realized that the vibrations and the buzzings had diminished to a slight humming sensation. He felt more secure and he opened his eyes and found himself staring at the ceiling Two feet, uh, two feet in front of him. And he was surprised that he floated that high and instinctively thought about looking at his body on the bed. Oh, yikes, don't do that. <laughs> and there's a couple things here. First of all, um, you don't necessarily have clear vision immediately when you leave your body. Sometimes you're blind for a period of time. The important thing is, is you ask for your um, uh, your visuals. You ask for your vision to come in clearly as soon as possible. Uh, and that's kind of what he did when he floated up. But his but by looking at his body on the bed, he instantly snapped back into his physical self. By thinking about the physical body, by certainly by looking at the physical body, all you're going to do is get sucked back in again, which is why I've told you in the past, once you're out, get the heck out, <laughs> okay? You want to get as far away from your physical body as possible. Do not think about it. Because if you do, your 
astral self, astral mind, whatever, will conclude that you wish to return to your physical body. You know, the only people who worry about returning to their physical body are people who've never projected. Anyone who's an astral projector knows the easiest thing in the world is go back to your physical body. That's way too easy. And it's way too easy to lose a great experience by doing that or by thinking about it. Um, so, you know, he realized that this was a mistake and that he had to uh, avoid focusing on his physical self. Uh, his next entry was on October 12th, 1972. He woke up around 3.15 after about three and a half hours of sleep again, which he described as two uh, REM periods or rapid eye period movements. I'm not sure how he ascertained that in 1972, but it sounds about right, I suppose. Anyway, he moved to a sofa in the living room, and after about 40 minutes of reading, he became sleepy and began to do a different visualization. This time, he pictured himself as a bright orange balloon filling with helium, and he could feel himself becoming lighter and lighter as the balloon expanded. And uh, he, uh, he tried to intensify that and hold that visualization as long as possible. Then he drifted off to sleep. Make sure you allow yourself to drift off to sleep. You don't want to stay awake doing visualizations. That's not going to help you. So he would drift off to sleep and then he'd wake into the vibrations and the buzzing again. And uh, he'd separate and he'd float up to the ceiling. Now, I would typically roll out of my body, but you could also float too. I just like rolling out of my body because it put me on the floor and it made it easier for me to get away from my physical self. Um, whereas floating up against the ceiling, if you can't float all the way out, up out of your home, it, it can become problematical. Some people, especially new people, can have a hard time maneuvering if they're floating against the ceiling. So out of instinct, he reached out his arms, he touched the ceiling, but instead of touching, his hand slowly entered the tingling vibrational substance of the ceiling. And if, and if you've ever moved through a wall or a forest through a ceiling, you know that there is a, a slight tingling as you go through it. Um, but you're vibrating at a higher level than the, the physical matter or the astral matter of the wall, so you can pass through it freely. And eventually, in his case, he learned how to pass through the roof and float out of the top of his house. And uh, if you've ever heard of a group called the Talking Heads, which was uh, popular in the 70s and the uh, earlier 80s, they had a song called, And She Was. And you'll, if you listen to the lyrics, you'll see they're describing someone having an astral projection. <laughs> so check that out sometime. So anyway, he thought of standing uh, and instantly he was upright. He was at the highest peak of his house. He looked around, he saw the antenna, he saw the night and the sky, and he saw this luminescent silvery glow. Uh, he obviously was rising in vibration at this point. So he spread his arms, he glided down the roof, and he flew over his backyard. Uh, he, then, he then slowly descended until he was flying about four feet above the ground. I find there's about three different levels in astral projection. There's flying around what I call treetop level. Then um, uh, there's also flying in the sky like an airplane level. And then of course above that is space. Um, normally newer people tend to fly around treetop level. He found himself around four feet. Um, for some reason, he felt as if he was getting heavier, and he continued descending until he was just inches above the grass. So he was losing some vibrational energy here. He thought about control, but he realized it was too late, and he ended up just crashing into his lawn face first. And at that instant, he returned back to his physical body. Uh, so that's 
where I want to leave off for right now because this has gone on long enough. But I think it's interesting to note that many people who have had initial experiences will be able to identify with, with what I just talked about. And those who haven't and are seeking to project, here's some ideas that you can use and information which you can now realize that when you're experiencing these odd sensations that there's no reason to fear. I've experienced them. William Bowman's experienced them. Monroe's experienced them. Anybody who's asked to project it has experienced them. They are not dangerous. There's no reason to be fearful. At any rate, this is Rick. If you found this uh, episode interesting or perhaps helpful, please hit the like button, share it with those of like mind. Subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure that bell is solid so that it's on all, so that you're notified when there are uh, new experiences on um, Wednesday and Saturday. And questions and comments, share. Have you had these experiences too? Um, uh, have you had experienced something slightly different? It might be interesting. Share it with everyone else. And as always, this is Rick, and I will see you on the astral plane.